I tend to check the weather on my phone pretty often, and the weather apps that I use are generally pretty accurate, but they're not measuring the weather conditions right here at my house. In some cases, the weather information that I'm getting could be from a weather station that is dozens of miles away. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the most accurate weather information by building a weather station right here in my own yard. I've started brainstorming some ideas on which kind of measurements I want to include in this design. I don't think it would be much of a weather station if I didn't measure temperature and humidity, so I'll definitely include those. It would also be nice to measure rainfall and wind speed as well as air pressure. I think if I can get those fundamental measurements, that'll be a good start. To measure temperature, humidity, and air pressure, I'm using the Adafruit MS8607 breakout board. This is a one-stop shop breakout board for all of those measurements, so it's going to be super convenient to include in this project. And then to measure rainfall and wind speed, I've got the SparkFun weather meter kit. This kit comes with a little anemometer and a little weather vane thingy that tells me which direction the wind is coming from. And then it has this fancy little rain gauge here that will measure rainfall very accurately. All of these sensors need to talk to some sort of microcontroller and I have a few options here. I could connect them all up to an Arduino and read all of the measurements just fine. But my plan is to make this weather station connected to the internet, so I'm going to use an ESP32 for its Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi connectivity. So to get started, I'm going to connect all of these sensors to an ESP32 to see if I can get some measurements out of them. The components in the SparkFun weather meter kit have RJ11 connectors on the end. So in order to interface those with my microcontroller, I have an RJ11 connector here and I'm going to solder it to a breakout board. Let me explain how each of these sensors work. The anemometer and the rain gauge are pretty straightforward, while the wind vane is a little bit more complicated, as we'll see in a minute. As the anemometer spins, there's a little reed switch inside that opens and closes depending on how fast the wind speed is. As the wind speed increases, those pulses get closer and closer together. So to measure the wind speed, all I need to do is measure the amount of time between pulses. I know from the data sheet that a pulse time of one second is equivalent to a wind speed of 1.5 miles per hour. The rain gauge works very similarly. As the water fills up one side of the bucket, it gets to a point where it's too heavy and it tips over. When that happens, the reed switch inside pulses and I know that each pulse is the equivalent of 0.011 inches of rainfall. The wind vane on the other hand is a lot more complicated. It has eight switches inside and a network of resistors. As the position of the wind vane changes, it varies the resistance on the output. I can read that change in resistance using a voltage divider and a microcontroller. I've written some basic Arduino code for the ESP32. I have temperature, humidity, and pressure readings coming from the MS8607, and I've got wind speed, wind direction, and rainfall measurements coming from the SparkFun weather meter kit. But my plan with this project was to make a Wi-Fi connected weather station. So I set up an Adafruit.io account, and I've added some more code to stream these data to my Adafruit.io dashboard. If you were gonna replicate this project, this is the point where you would have a whole bunch of options. There are a lot of things you could do with this data. My plan is to send this data to the National Weather Service to use in forecasting models. But you could also send it to weather apps like Weather Underground, or if you're into home automation and you use Home Assistant, you could use this information to trigger other automations. The point is, there are a bunch of options of what you can do with this data. I'm ready to take this project outside, but right now it's tethered to a USB cable. So I'm going to make this whole project solar powered and I'm going to put everything into a weatherproof box. Let's walk over to my bench and I'll explain what I mean. Here's the electronics that I need to power. The cool thing about the ESP32 feather boards is that they can be powered using a LiPo battery like this. I could take this LiPo battery and plug it right in and this whole setup would run for at least a couple of days, but after that I'd have to take the battery out and recharge it. Since I don't want to have to do that, I've got myself a solar panel and a solar charge controller. The solar panel plugs right into the charge controller as well as the battery and the electronics. I've tried to size these components with enough capacity to power these electronics indefinitely. The solar panel will charge the battery during the day and there's enough capacity to keep it running overnight and even into the next day. Even if I have several cloudy days in a row and I don't get the full power from the solar panel, there's enough capacity in here to make up the difference. Once I get all of these components connected together, I wanna make sure that they're not exposed to the elements. So I've got a weatherproof container here that will keep everything dry.
At this point, I'm pretty much done with the weather station enclosure and now I'm ready to install it outside. I want the weather station to be positioned pretty high up in the air, but this is a 10 foot length of conduit, which is just a little bit too long, so I need to cut it down. Once I do that, I'm going to use an auger bit to start a hole in the ground and then pound it the rest of the way in. The weather meter kit, which is the anemometer and the wind vane, will sit on top while the weather station enclosure with all the electronics will sit down below. I've had the weather station set up for about a week now and it's been collecting data and I can see all of that data on my graphs. We had a ton of rain here and I only had a little bit of a problem with water leaking into the enclosure and it's totally my fault. I forgot to put the rubber grommet around the cable gland, which would obviously explain why there's water inside there, but I was able to clean it up and reinstall the grommet and everything works fine now. The other thing I did before closing it back up was use a heat gun to dry out the air and I put a desiccate packet inside to keep the moisture level down. As always, the design files and bill of materials for this project and all my other projects can be found on GitHub. You can look down in the description for that link. If you like projects like this, I recently made another video where I built a solder reflow oven out of a toaster oven. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Sized Engineer and I look forward to seeing you next time.